Last month, I received a letter from Marco Medicino, the Federal Minister of Public Safety. And in this letter, he was asking that Alberta provide resources to help confiscate firearms starting in the fall of 2022. We're talking about 30,000 firearms all told. To be clear, these firearms were acquired legally. The list of over 1,500 banned models were all previously non-restricted or restricted firearms and include hunting rifles and shotguns as well as historical artifacts almost 100 years old. And while the federal government has labeled them as, in their words, assault style, end quote, that's a label designed to scare Canadians who are unfamiliar with firearms. It's a description based purely on their appearance and not on any unusual danger that they pose or mechanical capability that they possess. Indeed, these f guns are not materially different from any number of semi-automatic rifles and shotguns that continue to be legal for any qualified Albertan to own. This is politically motivated confiscation, pure and simple. One that will do nothing to make Alberta a safer place or to reduce the criminal misuse of firearms. And so, I responded to Minister Medicino by telling him that no, Alberta will not assist the federal government in this or any federal effort to strip lawfully obtained personal property from our residents. To challenge this ban, we are also pursuing legal action. Alberta will seek to intervene in six ongoing judicial review applications challenging the constitutionality of the federal firearm prohibition legislation. As interveners, we would be able to offer the court arguments based on the specific challenges that the federal legislation has created for Alberta's law-abiding firearms community and advance legal arguments that the federal government has overreached with its plan to ban 1,500 models of firearms. Upon my instructions, my ministry's lawyers sent a letter to the federal court last week advising it of our plans. We have also been informed by civil servants from Public Safety Canada that the federal government intends to conscript provincial RCMP officers into acting as confiscation agents as part of their, what is their terminology, buyback program, end quote. Now, although I have been advised that the commanding officer for K Division does not support using provincial police resources to administer the federal government's confiscation program, we believe that the federal government will continue with their plans undeterred. Now, it's important to remember that Alberta taxpayers pay over $750 million per year for the RCMP, and we will not tolerate taking officers off the streets in order to confiscate the property of law-abiding firearms owners. To take action, I have used the authorities that we have as a province. Under the Provincial Police Service Agreement, this is the agreement that we have with Canada to contract our, our provincial policing, and I've used these authorities to write to the commanding officer of the RCMP in Alberta to formally identify the confiscation program as an activity that is not an, quote, objective, priority, or goal of the province or the provincial police service, end quote. And that the use of RCMP resources would be contrary to the effective and efficient delivery of police services, consequently, the RCMP should refuse to participate. Now, despite taking this step, the federal government may still direct the RCMP to serve as confiscation agents. To prevent this from happening, Alberta will formally dispute any attempt to do so by invoking Article 23 of that agreement, the Provincial Police Service Agreement. Our government understands the dangers that come with the criminal misuse of firearms, and we've always been in favor of sensible uh, policies to mitigate those risks. As today's announcement bears out, however, we will never support misguided policies, fear-mongering, or the seizure of private property. I'll now invite Alberta's Chief Firearms Officer, Terry Bryant, to come to the podium to provide some remarks. Thank you, Terry. My position as a provincially appointed Chief Firearms Officer specifies that I have a dual role 
to supervise the administration of the licensing and other provisions of the Firearms Act in its current form, and to advocate for common sense changes to ensure the law remains focused on criminal misuse of firearms and avoids imposing unnecessary burdens on the law-abiding firearms community. In the latter capacity, I have previously expressed strong opposition to the federal government's plans to prohibit and confiscate some 30,000 lawfully acquired firearms from Albertans. These prohibitions were not based on any sound principle or evidence, were not subjected to rigorous parliamentary scrutiny before the order in council was imposed, and have no meaningful connection to any public safety goals. No consultations worthy of the name have been undertaken with respect to the proposed compensation schedule, and no concrete practical plan has been proposed as to how owners would take advantage of it, even if it did exist and they did want to do so. Together with the proposed handgun transfer freeze now before Parliament, the planned confiscations represent a failed approach to reducing violence in Canadian society and are unwarranted and unacceptable infringements on the property rights and personal freedoms of Albertans. All Canadians, whether firearms owners or not, should be concerned by the scapegoating of law-abiding citizens and the targeting of their property, which sets a disturbing precedent, and by the misuse of billions of taxpayer dollars that these plans would entail. Even if these costs can be contained to just $2 billion, that would cover the costs of some 12,000 person years of regulatory and enforcement personnel or a fully paid 20-year career for some 600 people. I am gratified to see today's announcements as concrete indicators of the steadfast position of Minister Shandro and the Alberta government as a whole to support law-abiding firearms owners and to oppose Ottawa's misguided measures by all means available under current legislative frameworks. I look forward to working with all branches of the Alberta government to ensure that we leave no stone unturned in our efforts to protect Albertans from Ottawa's senseless overreach and to redirect attention to where it belongs, to criminals smuggling, trafficking, and misusing firearms in ways that threaten public safety. Thank you. CTV Minister, um, this is what you're announcing today here. This really is, is just a direction to police to please not do what the feds or the federal government is asking you to do, if I'm not misunderstanding you. What does this really do? Is this, is this just slowing things down? Is this, uh, is this about objecting or like in practical terms for firearms owners that have these things sitting in their safe that they cannot take out, cannot sell, uh, except to the government when they decide to come around with some money? What does this actually do for those people? Well, first of all, what this is about is making sure that we as Canadians, when we have our, our taxpayers being spent on policing, that it actually gets spent on policing. And for us in Alberta, that $750 million is spent on making our community safer, not spent on confiscating firearms from law-abiding citizens. So that's, that's the, the main priority here, making sure that our policing dollars go to making sure our communities are safe. Um, for, for those folks, who will continue to have uh, concerns, they're right to have those concerns about the next steps that the federal government may be taking. Because I think as the federal government continues to try and figure out how to operationalize this proposal, more and more Canadians are going to find out how bad of a boondoggle this is proposed to be. And they're going to find out even more um, about how, how this is proposed to be, um, well, how this is going to end up in, in mismanagement, I, I think, in, in these ideas. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering if you could give us a dollar figure as to what, um, uh, how much it would cost the province to facilitate these uh, seizures of these firearms. Well, um, we, we at first were advised by civil servants at Public Safety Canada that this was something they were considering and making the direction to the RCMP. Um, I, I suppose that, that depend on, on what the directions from Public Safety Canada might have been to the RCMP. Um, so I, I don't know a specific, specific quantum at this time, but um, I think the, the main point, though, is if we're going to spend, as Albertans, $750 million on the RCMP, that it's got to be focused on making sure it's spent on making our community safer. Do you think this, this wrangle over these, these firearms is... Is this another way for you to argue for a provincial police force? 
Well, I, I see them as, as separate. Um, I see them as separate issues, Bill. Um, and, but what we do have right now is we are a province, one of seven provinces who do contract out our, our provincial policing. We all have the same identical PPSA, Provincial Policing Service Agreement, with, uh, with Canada. And when we negotiated this back between 2007 and, and 2012, there are um, certain clauses within there that, that provide us as a province, since it is provincial jurisdiction, with certain rights. And we are definitely going to use um, those opportunities within the agreement to stand up for Albertans, and in particular the, the law-abiding um, property owners who have those uh, firearms. So what is it in the Provincial Police Service Agreement um, that what is in there that would allow you to not enforce a federal law or federal direction or to direct the RCMP to to not do it? Can you can you just explain that for me? Sure. So the the PPSA allows us to identify for the uh, RCMP an objective priority or goal of the province or and what what it in particular is not an an activity. And so uh, after advising the RCMP of that, we would expect that the RCMP then would um, listen to, to us and, and refuse to participate if we identify the confiscation program as not being a priority, uh, objective, or goal under uh, provincial police service. If then, uh, the next step would be that Canada still tries to conscript the RCMP in being um, being agents to confiscate firearms, then the, the next clause we would be uh, seeking to use would be Article 23, which would be the dispute resolution clause. What message is that going to send to people who are lawful firearms? Like, are, are you concerned for those officers who, who are conscripted and are going to go to people's doors <laughs> and try to, try to grab their guns or whatever? Like, what, what effect is that going to have when people are already very riled up and sensitive about this issue? Well, well first of all, we have to remember that the, the entire um, point behind the, the policy that was developed by Canada was, was wrong-headed. Uh, none of this is focused on keeping our community safe. Um, we have the federal government proposing to, to ban historical artifacts like flint and lock firearms. Um, Catherine, I mean, the last time someone committed a crime with a flint and lock firearm, um, he was wearing a patch and had a parrot on his shoulder. Um, it, this is not about keeping our community safe. This is a, it's, it's pure politics from the perspective of the, the federal government. And I think it's important for us to make sure that the money that we spend on, on provincial policing is focused on provincial policing and not wrong-headed policy ideas that the federal government is trying to, to impose upon us. Good afternoon. Uh, Minister, I want to go back to what you said a few questions ago there. You said the main objective here is to make sure policing dollars go towards policing. So what I'm unclear about, does that mean if the feds inject more money into Alberta specifically to enforce this and have those confis uh, confiscation agents, you'd actually enforce it and be in favor of it? No, no. I, I think what we're saying, and, and that's why we're also uh, intervening in the six judicial reviews, because even if Canada does continue um, with this wrong-headed policy idea, that we will continue to um, advocate for um, firearms uh, legally, uh, uh, lawfully um, obtained uh, firearms within Alberta to by by um, intervening or seeking to intervene. In the um, in these six uh, judicial reviews, and continue to advocate for sensible policy that reduces gun crime in Alberta and Canada, rather than uh, policies that uh, are not going to make our communities any safer. Yeah, I mean, Minister, there's no right to bear arms in in, in in Canada. Firearms regulation is all federal. It's up to uh, the discretion of the federal government whether or not, or rather, how far those gun rights go. So. If the federal government wants to change those laws, I mean, I, 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 I'm a little confused at what you think asking the RCMP to not enforce it will actually do. This kind of sounds almost like Danielle Smith's Alberta Sovereignty Act. No, no, Safe, it's, this is, first of all, us making sure that the money that we spend on policing is spent on policing. And second, 
if the federal government is going to propose policy and, and legislation that we think isn't in the best interests of, um, of community safety, then we have the ability to at least ask the court to allow us to intervene and to be able to make sensible arguments in front of the court representing the best interests of Albertans. So that is, that is why we would be seeking that opportunity to intervene because we think we can um, provide um, a perspective with, in the courtroom to represent Albertans and, and make sure that what is decided by the federal government when it comes to um, legislation related to firearms is going to be focused on community safety. Thanks, Dave. Thank you very much, uh, and thank you everyone for coming today. Uh, this concludes our, uh, our press conference this afternoon. Thank you.